this basket class to me, it's um, important on, I guess, um, several different levels. One, of course, is my family. Um, this is one um, craft I really don't know how to do or I've seen. And so this was, a, I seen a, the class and it came to me right as a, like at a good time. My great grandmother was Chiricahua, but her skills weren't passed down. So um, it's nice to be able to reconnect with that part of, of a culture that was lost to me, to my family. The purpose of our bas basket weaving in the old times was to, you know, uh, gather the food because we're known as uh, hunters and uh, gatherers. You know, in the older times, it was, you know, basically for the food gathering and in order to, you know, pick up all the cactus plants and all the things that, you know, we have to go through. So the basket weaving is important. It's, it's really died out. It's, it's the problem. And I wanted to learn how to do the, the burden baskets because that's one of our main uh, baskets that they use to gather because they used it for gathering bigger, bigger things. My great-grandmother um, left the U.S. And, and married a Mexican man. Um, she didn't pass the culture down, and it was lost to my branch of the family. So that, um, for me, is personal, because I'm getting, like I said, I'm getting that little bit back. Um, and to think that that could happen so many times over is frightening that this, these, I should I'll say these, because it's not just this basket, um, that these types of things that our ancestors had relied on to survive could just be lost. Nowadays, um, I've noticed there's a big demand for um, traditional stuff like this. Like, there's always somebody asking, um, I need somebody to make a cradle board for me. I need somebody to make a basket for me. I need somebody to make a tea necklace for me. You know, it's really something that's um, <sighs> kind of dying out. So it's nice that we have workshops like this to help um, pass on that um, knowledge and hopefully <laughs> keep it around forever. The material, filling it in raw form like this, it's making you be patient. It is asking you to slow down, like putting a model car together. Everything's already fixed, and all you have to do is read the instructions and, you know, tack on A, B, C, D. But here, there's no instructions that I can refer to. It's more trial and error, and it's more you have to do the process and really ex um, just sit there and see how things are going to come out. And it's, you just can't. <laughs> There's not gonna be an instruction book for every basket you make. And that's, I guess that's the reality of it. <laughs> In Arizona specifically, a lot of different tribes use like yucca and they do kind of like the coil baskets where it's just like um, pretty fast, I guess you could say, to complete. Um, this is totally different. This is actually using the resources um, in the, I guess, um, in the area. So a lot of willow, um, the sumac branches, uh, stuff that's grown in higher elevation. You see traditional uh, plants and um, just different things that are out there and you really don't know. You pass by them every day, but you don't um, take notice, you know, until you, I mean, I guess until you really learn what they are. And so that's one thing is like, I'm gonna be looking out for. <laughs> hmm, that looks like a really good branch I could use, you know, or. I was surprised at how very little tools we needed to, um, to do this. A lot of it was um, stripping um, bark and, um, you know, the branches with your bare hands, you know, using your knees, using um, your fingers, you know. Um, I thought it would be like being able to use certain tools to be able to scrape out a lot of that stuff, but no, I was really surprised at how it was very hands-on. Um, when you start, there's there's the willow stick, which is thicker, and you make your slit, and then you you are trying to separate it in half, and there's balance. 
So if it starts to go too much one way, then you have to push the other way. And if you're not feeling it and paying attention, if you just want it to, to hurry and do it the way you want it to, it's gonna strip. It's, you're gonna lose the stick. Um, because it's already got its grain in there and you have to just follow what it wants to do. You can guide it, but you can't make it do something it doesn't want to do. It's my, my first basket. Um, didn't quite know what it would take to um, put it together, I guess, and the patience of um, making myself pay attention to little details because at first when I was you know pulling the, the, the willows apart I was just and it would split like not even three-fourths of the way down and so making myself disciplined to learn the process because I think that's a lot of times you just oh just let's do it and get it done kind of thing but it was like okay no you can't you have to listen to the instructor, you have to watch what she's doing, and then yourself have to, you know, do exactly what she's, she's, she's doing it as best she can to explain to you how to do it and learn from her experience. I know by doing that same method here, by looking and listening real close, and I know I paid attention and and yet, you know, I still don't have the feeling and I, I think, you know, it's, it's by splitting and cleaning the stems and catching it now. So and being here yesterday and today, it's, it's helped a lot. So I like it. I liked it. It's going to benefit me and my tribe. Well, the basket I started off with, I had to add some more of the uh, willow. So that's why that's sticking out. But it's starting to shape to look like a basket. Um, I don't think we're going to get very too far today, but um, the hardest part was definitely starting it. Um, and after you get the hang of weaving it, I think I'd be able to finish on my own. To tell you the truth, whenever I did it from yesterday and my fingers were really sore and I didn't really, I guess, anticipate that feeling of being, my hands being sore because I haven't had that feeling in a really long time. And um, the smell, yeah, of the sumac and the willow combined, it just makes you think about a lot of different, um, I guess, like calming, a calming smell. And that's how I think I'm gonna associate now the, the sumac and the willow. Making the thread, just this part, took me back to beginning weaving. <laughs> and um, that feeling of, you know, am I ever gonna get it? And in my mind, I know, okay, if I keep practicing, eventually I'll get to the point where I don't have to think about it and my fingers will just know what to do. And right now my mind is trying to tell me what to do and that's what's messing me up because I'm not really letting the plant do what it needs to do. I'm trying to make it do what I want it to do and that's, um, I end up stripping it down to the bark and then I have to start all over again. Um, so that was totally new. I am a substance abuse um, preventionist and so I do a lot of different things in the community and um, tying things back to culture and tradition is a really strong, uh, you know, a resiliency um, skill that I'd like to teach other kids. And um, now that I know so many people in my community that have taken this class, it'd be really good to have them as a resource. And the more connections you have to your culture and to traditions, it's a great strength in, in the resiliency skill for, for kids and youth. I'm always reminded that even though um, we can be separated by so many, you know, a thousand miles, there are some things that are just the same. You know, it doesn't matter what tribe you're from, some things are the same. Different materials, different uses maybe, but it's still the same. And some things are entirely different, you know, because the materials are different, some things have to be. But um, like splitting the sticks, it's the same thing you would do with with um, Jankas or Thule in California. Before, it was actually a necessity for the Apache people to have, you know, to be able to carry things while they work and gather for wood, gather for food. Um, everyone um, basically needed one. And now today, you know, 
you see him a lot in ceremonies, you see him a lot in home decoration to kind of, I guess, identify yourself as, you know, this is an Apache basket, I'm Apache. And it's really important because Apache people are known for baskets, you know. No, I'm just very thankful that the Herd Museum was able to bring this to us, you know, and I'm very thankful that um, I am such a true believer and things happen for a reason. Um, when um, something is put forth for you, it will either work out um, for a reason or doesn't work out for a reason, you know, things like that. And um, I think this is was brought to, to me for a reason. So I'm going to take that blessing and I thank the Creator for that and the people who, who were able to put this type of stuff together.